There's one question you've got to ask. And you have to ask this in every interaction. You have to ask yourself, okay, what is, why does she want to talk to me? Why does she want to keep talking to me? What's in it for her? In any interaction. All right, so there are a couple of things. One, you could be really, really good looking. Would that not help your interaction? But how much control do you have over this? Not much, right? Oh, you do, uh, to some degree. Um, you know, when we talk about how you dress, how you're groomed, okay, all this kind of stuff. You be, guys would be amazed. When I, when I take guys to a, um, to a fashion stylist, how big a difference that can make. Seriously, it's like, far out. I, I walked in here with some random guy off the street and I came out with a freaking male model. It's really weird, but yes, you can do a lot. But I know there's lots of things you can't change. You can't go changing your height. You can change your weight, but that's very slow. It takes time. I get it. So, yes, you could be really, really good looking, but I'm not going to focus on that too much because our control over that is somewhat limited. You could be wealthy, powerful, or famous. You don't have to think that Snoop Dogg walks into a room and struggles too much with the girls, whether or not it's getting a game. Okay, so these are ways that you could bring value to an interaction, but they're not the things that I want to focus on because A, we have very little control over them. And B, interestingly enough, if they're the only tools you've got, you don't necessarily end up in very good relationships as a result. I've had a lot of clients who have had a lot of money, and when I look at the interactions they've had in the past, in fact, something that I often find very funny, I never realize it until I started coaching this stuff. You know, often you'll see like a Ferrari drive past you, Neow! and it's like this, this, this older guy in the front seat, and there's this really hot blonde with big boobs next to him. The, you know that? You got any, any idea how many times he has never laid a hand on her? <laughs> You don't realize until, until you actually you know, talk to these guys, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. So yeah, it, it is attractive, but then the type of women that you're attracting with it, again, we're talking about quality, it's not, it's not what you want to use. Even if you are in here a male Adonis, I don't want you to use, I don't want these to be your only forms of value, or it's not going to serve you well. What I do want to focus on is two other things, okay? Um, first is this, if you can teach her Something fascinating. We, um, we, I do a lot of research ongoing. Um, I don't do the research, I should say. I do the reading on the research that other qualified people do. Um, and there's a lot of research at the moment going into what actually creates attraction between people. Why do people decide? Who do people decide who to stick with and who to settle with and all that kind of thing? And you know what they found was, was the, was really what decided when people, why people would get into a relationship. You guys want to have a guess? They were similar. They were similar? No. Oh, well, they may have been, but it actually wasn't a very good indicator. Just being similar wasn't a very good indicator. They're different. They're different. No. <laughs> good guess, though. <laughs> if that was wrong, different must be right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because you were cheating. But no, not quite. But close. All right, I'll give you one. Why not? Close, um, but not quite. Ah, now we're getting closer. Who said that? Yes, now we're getting much closer. It actually, very unromantically, it all came down to utility. Would you believe? In fact, what they found was that people get into relationships when the other person provides some sort of utility to the other person. And that sounds really unromantic, but don't forget, utility can be lots of things. Utility can be that I... I I'm someone who never got enough love from an individual in my family, and the person I'm going to settle down with is someone who has to slather someone with love and will never let them go. That could be utility. But utility often is, is as well, let's say I am very motivated to, be, to build a business and be successful and, and teach people and, and, and improve people's lives, and I may meet a girl who's just starting that point in her career. I have massive utility to her as someone who's been through that before. I am very appealing to her because I'm on a journey, she's just starting and I have utility. It sounds... Yeah, yeah, it is. It's about having values that are of value to the other person. It doesn't all, it isn't just about money. We're not talking about money or wealth or power. We're just talking about you have to have some use to the other person. So it all comes down to this. But the interesting thing and the reason why I digress onto this, A, I just like spurting random facts because it is interesting. See, it's a fact. You've already got one fact you can tell girls. But more than that, Women, women, people in general like learning interesting things from people. 
We enjoy that experience. So one of the great things that you can do is have a few things in your mind that are really genuinely fascinating to tell people. I've been doing this for a long time in my interactions. And you might say, well, well that's cool, that, that's nice for you. Where do I find something interesting? So um, one place, and I should have put it up on the slide, but, but one, of the, one of the easiest places to get fascinating facts that are interesting to everyone and not just uber geeks like me would be cracked.com. Who's heard of Cracked? It's, a, it's, a, it's an internet site where they'll have like um, the seven things you never knew about past American presidents or the five weirdest origins of famous symbols or, you know, and, and, and you, they're really interesting articles, but you learn things that most people find interesting. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of something, a fact that you can now share with a girl. It's an interesting, a fascinating piece of information. Do you know why the love heart comes from? That's because I told you. <laughs> See, nobody really thinks about this. Where does that symbol, because your heart is in that shape, so where does that come from? Now, if, you know, if, if you've ever sort of looked at our antiquities, you'll also note that there's a heart often appears on old Roman coins. In fact, the heart symbol appears in quite a lot of places. Well, the heart symbol is actually the shape, the rough shape of a seed to a particular plant. A particular plant that was very, very popular in the Roman era because it worked as a contraceptive. If women would take, consume seeds from this plant, they couldn't conceive children. Very popular for couples. And this seed was revered, as you can imagine. It was worth more than gold. In fact, it was worth more than anything, because it would allow you to have sex without babies. And this seed, this plant, got so overused that it got wiped off the face of the planet. So the love heart actually rec represents sex. Lots of it. So that's an interesting fact that you can tell. So it's one way to add value. If you can, you can share, if you can teach something, something interesting, that's a value that you're bringing. Uh, more than that. And this is really the focus of this, to make her laugh. Can you pick up girls without making them laugh? Yes. You can. You really can. I've seen it done. But humor, humor, we all like to laugh. There's not a single person on this planet who will say, I hate that guy. Every time I see him, he makes me laugh. No, no. So A, everybody loves to laugh. And B, it's the quickest way to add value. If you go, if, you, if you've got 10 seconds, 30 seconds to make an impression on this woman to have a want to have you hang around for longer than that time, if you can make her laugh, you've got, you, 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 you've got an in. You've got, now got a chance to make an actual impression. Because I know a lot of you have had this experience. You walk up to a girl, you say, you know, oh, hey, how are you doing? Good, cool. How do you know each other? Awesome. You come here often? Great. And you can see in her face that she's already written you off. Anyone who's ever approached girls before knows this feeling of you talking to her, but she's like, that cool, yep, short, one word answers, not that interested in you hanging around for very long. If you can go in there and you can make it fun, you can bring engagement into this interaction where she laughs. How do you do that? How are you going to go about that? Well, a couple of things. One, my favorite type of way to open a girl, to say hello, to introduce myself, is something that's situational and funny enough to make her smile. It's my favorite way of opening a girl. If you're in a bar, who's been in a bar and has seen uh, one girl or two girls peering into a phone? Good. Next time you do that, walk up to them and say, hey, you guys looking at porn? Now, I know there may be some circumstances where that's totally inappropriate, in which case, don't use it. There's no absolute pickup line that works every time. I'm giving you an example. You see two girls sitting in the corner, far corner of a bar. You can walk over to them and you say, hey, you guys look like you're hiding from someone. Ex-boyfriends? Now, this isn't, these aren't the funniest pickup lines in the world, but they're enough to get someone smiling. And when you do that, when you bring that to an interaction, you get a good response. 
How do you get good at these? One of the best things to do is if you're out with mates, even if you're not going to talk to anyone that night, sit with them, you know, as you do, with your beer in your hand like this. Oh. And have a chat. Say, hey, what could we, how could we open this girl that would be fun? Brainstorm. Have a think about it. Because it's actually, it's just a muscle that you're using. Humor, thinking of the right thing to say is a muscle. In the beginning, you sit there and you think, oh my god, what do I say? Hello. No, that's boring. Ugh. But after a while, if you brainstorm, you come up with some ideas. Especially if you don't have to talk to them. See, oftentimes, the only time we think about what we could say to a girl is if it's a girl we very much want to go and talk to. Try taking that pressure off. Sit with your mates and just brainstorm. You'll get better at it very quickly. And I always say to guys, if you can start the first 10, 10, 10 seconds to a minute, two minutes, is you just having fun, playful banter. You've now established value. You're a fun guy. And you've got a chance to do everything else you need to do in this interaction. Does that make sense, guys? This is how you, this is the whole thing, is when I say attraction, flirting, you're supposed to make her attracted to you. I don't mean she has to want to jump your bones. I mean, you have to demonstrate that she likes you being around. That opens the gap for everything else. Because one thing I know, most guys in this room, you got a lot of really good stuff to offer a chick, you're not getting a chance to demonstrate it. This is how you get your chance to demonstrate it. Hey guys, do you get frustrated approaching women and then getting rejected? I'd like to invite you to my free 12 video training series where I'm gonna show you how to make such an amazing first impression before you even say a word that rejection will soon become a thing of the past. See that button down there? Don't procrastinate anymore. Go ahead and click on it and I look forward to working with you.